Uses and Risks of Nanoparticles by kscience.com. General uses of nanoparticles includes medicines, so nanoparticles are used in medicines, antibacterial silver nanoparticles in clothes, so some clothes have antibacterial silver nanoparticles in them. Some sun creams contain nanoparticles, so if someone's on holiday and there's a lot of sun emitting UV radiation, then the sun cream containing nanoparticles can protect that person from getting sunburnt. Another use of nanoparticles are in fuel cells, where cars containing fuel cells have nanoparticles which help the fuel cells work. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. If someone contains a tumour, and this is the tumour, a carbon or gold nanocage can be used to treat that tumour. So this is the carbon or gold nanocage, and it contains the medicine. So the carbon or gold nanocages contains the medicine. These carbon or gold nanocages are put into a syringe where the person is then injected with the syringe. So when the syringe is injected in the person, the medicine inside the nanocages travels through the body, where these nanocages are then absorbed by the tumour. So the tumour absorbs the nanocages. A laser is then applied to the gold nanocages, which heats up and kills the tumour cells without destroying healthy tissue. So the nanocages absorb the laser, heating up the tumour cells, killing them. And this is a good thing for the patient because healthy tissue is not damaged. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. In this example, this person has been wearing these clothes for a while, and after a while, they start to smell in certain places. These smells are due to bacteria in clothes, represented by this bacterial cell here. So a solution to allow people to wear clothes for longer is to coat the clothes in antibacterial silver nanoparticles. So antibacterial silver nanoparticles coat these clothes. This is a good thing because these nanoparticles kill the bacteria. So when these bacteria are killed, the clothes can stay fresher for longer, which is a good thing for the consumer. And these nanoparticles kills harmful bacteria in hospitals, which again is a good thing as this limits the spread of harmful bacteria in hospitals. However, when washed, wastewater containing antibacterial silver nanoparticles can end up in natural water sources such as rivers and lakes. These nanoparticles can kill non-harmful bacteria so that the non-harmful bacteria are killed and this can affect the natural ecosystems, which is a bad thing. We do not want this to happen. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Titanium oxide nanoparticles used in sun cream helps protect us from the sun's harmful UV radiation when we're on holiday. The sun cream containing titanium oxide is spread all over the person's skin. The titanium oxide is so small and transparent that it absorbs dangerous UV radiation. So the titanium oxide is what absorbs the dangerous UV radiation meaning the person now has a less chance of cancer. The titanium oxide is so small and transparent that it spreads easily, covering the body better compared to larger particles. The consumer saves money as the sun cream spreads better, so they use less of it. However, there are problems associated with titanium oxide nanoparticles because when the sun cream is applied to the skin, 
the titanium oxide nanoparticles are so small they pass through the pores. They pass through the pores of the skin because they are so small. To explain how this affects us, here I'm drawing a capillary and these are cells. So this is the capillary and these are the cells surrounding the capillaries. The nanoparticles flow through the blood in the capillaries and the cells absorb the nanoparticles and we can see this as the cells absorb the nanoparticles and we do not know if the titanium oxide nanoparticles are toxic. If these titanium oxide nanoparticles are toxic, they can cause harm and could also damage and kill cells because of this and maybe cause cancer. Therefore, further tests are needed to make them safer and reduce the potential risk of them causing harm. Here we have a whole bunch of scientists and these scientists are still unsure as to whether nanoparticles are a hazard to human health and the environment. Many scientists still don't know the risks as they're new to us. So although nanoparticles are very useful, there are many unknown risks we're not sure about. When it comes to breathing, the small size of nanoparticles makes them very hazardous as they can easily be breathed in from the air. So nanoparticles are easy to breathe in. These nanoparticles can be breathed in, travel around the body in the bloodstream and pass through the cell membrane and into cells, potentially causing damage and harm. And finally, the high surface area to volume ratio means they can carry toxic substances and catalyze unwanted harmful reactions. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.